Ever get that feeling like you just want to escape? Like ditch everything and run off to the woods? Oh, yeah, d definitely. I think a lot of people, especially when they're younger, have that feeling. Right. And my side of the mountain just nails it. Yeah. You know, your students just finished reading it. Yeah. And it's a classic. It's like this deep dive into why we're so drawn to this story and to these characters. Yeah. It's like, why does this book speak to generation after generation? What is it about Sam Gribley's adventure that pulls us in? It's interesting because Jean George, the author, he doesn't just tell you the story. He like throws you right in there with Sam. Yes. You're living it with him. All the challenges, how he figures things out and how he just becomes a part of the wilderness. It all starts with Sam, this city kid who's just yearning for something more. Yeah. He wants a simpler life. Yeah. A life where he can rely on himself. And he actually does something about it. Mm. This kid runs away to his great grandfather's abandoned farm in the Catskill Mountains. Wow. And it doesn't take much with him. Just a pen knife, an axe, some flint and steel, and a ball of string. <laughs> really? That's it? <laughs> That's it. He's determined to make it on his own. Talk about resourceful. Right. And the book doesn't sugarcoat anything. It shows you the tough stuff, the struggles he goes through just to survive. Yeah, like what kind of things? Just the basics. Learning to build a fire, finding enough food, and facing that constant fear and loneliness. Imagine being out there all alone. I can't even imagine. It's like the setting itself, those mountains, they're almost another character in the book. Absolutely. The cat skills, they push Sam to his limits, shape his whole experience. You can just feel the wilderness in the book, the dense forests, the streams, the wildlife. Right. It's both beautiful and a little scary. Yeah. You know, it's a constant reminder that nature is powerful and Sam has to learn to live with it. But he doesn't just survive, he thrives. Yeah, exactly. And I think that turning point comes when he finds the old Gribbly farm. There's this beech tree with his family name carved into it. Oh, wow. That's got to feel special. Right. It's like the land is welcoming him back, giving him a sense of belonging, a connection to his past. It's like he's not just running away from something. He's connecting with something deeper. Totally. And that connection gets even stronger when he finds his home in a hollowed out hemlock tree. It's not just a shelter. It's a real home. That's so cool. What's it like? Imagine this. A deer hide door. A fireplace made of clay. All the furniture crafted from stuff he finds in the forest. Jean George describes it so well, you can practically smell the wood smoke. That's amazing. Yeah. It really shows you what humans can do. You know, that ingenuity to adapt and make a life for yourself, even when things are tough. And of course, no wilderness adventure is complete without animal companions. True. Sam's bond with Frightful, the peregrine falcon he adopts and trains. That's really something special. I bet. It's not just about hunting. They have this genuine friendship built on trust and respect. It's like he learns to communicate with a creature that's totally different from him. Exactly. It shows you how connected we could be with nature, even on such a deep level. And then there's the barren weasel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't forget him. <laughs> this mischievous little character. He adds a whole other dimension to Sam's life. It's this mix of friendship and rivalry. They're always trying to outsmart each other. So funny. He brings some lightness to the story. Yeah. He's like the wild spirit of the mountains. Sam has to learn to deal with that, too. But Sam doesn't go through all of this entirely alone. Right. Right. There are a few people he meets along the way who play big roles in his journey. Like Bill, the old man who teaches him how to build a fire. That's such an important skill. Crucial. It shows how important it is to share knowledge to help each other out, even when you're striving for self-sufficiency. You still need people. And then there's Ms. Turner, the librarian. She opens up this whole world of information for Sam and becomes a source of encouragement for him. Like a mentor, almost. Definitely. And then there's Bando, the English teacher, who becomes a real friend to Sam, a mentor too. So it's not all isolation. He has these connections to the world outside the mountain. It shows you that even when you're seeking solitude, you still crave that human connection. We need each other. But that feeling of safety gets shattered when Sam runs into a poacher. He has to think fast and use all his wilderness skills to hide and protect himself. Oh, wow. That's scary. It reminds you that even in a beautiful place like that, there's still danger. Yeah. It adds this layer of tension to the story and makes you realize how vulnerable Sam is. So his successes are even more impressive after that. Definitely. He learns so much. He can identify edible plants. He builds traps. He cooks. He even makes it through a harsh winter. Did you know he makes salt from hickory sticks? No way. And acorn pancakes. Really? It's amazing how resourceful he becomes. And his connection with the animals goes even deeper, too. Like that Halloween party with all the forest animals befriending a deer. 
and then surviving this crazy ice storm that traps him in his tree. That's intense. It really shows you the beauty and the power of nature. And Sam's growing respect for the creatures he lives with. But despite all these incredible experiences, he still has his struggles. Right. Oh, yeah. He gets lonely. He misses other people. And he's constantly battling this back and forth between wanting to be independent and wanting to go back to society. That's a tough one. It's something a lot of young people can relate to. That feeling of wanting to be on your own but still needing connection. It makes him a more real character. And then there's this heartwarming moment when his family finally finds him. What happens? They see how he's thrived in the wilderness and they're just amazed. It's really touching. He must be so proud. They realize how strong and resilient he's become. And that leads to this perfect ending where they join him in the Catskills and build a house nearby. Oh, uh, I love that. It blends his love of nature with the support of his family. Mm -hmm. It's like finding a balance between independence and connection. That's a great message. It shows you don't have to choose one or the other. You can have both. It's funny, isn't it, how my side of the mountain, it just grabs you and makes you think about those times when you were younger. Totally. Like that feeling of wanting to break free, to just explore and discover who you are. Exactly. And I get your students reading this book right now. They're probably feeling those same urges that drive Sam. Right. That pull towards independence, yeah. the excitement of facing a challenge, and that need to find your place in the world. And the book doesn't pretend it's all easy. It shows the loneliness, the fear, those moments when Sam doubts himself. But it also shows the incredible joy and sense of accomplishment he feels and how connecting with nature really feeds his soul. Yeah, it's a powerful message for young readers, you know? Mm. That growing up and discovering who you are comes with some bumps along the way, but the rewards are huge. Like the book is saying, hey, going out on your own can be tough, but man, is it ever worth it. And seeing Sam's ingenuity, his resilience, and just how determined he is, it's inspiring. Don't you think the way he uses his imagination is amazing too? Absolutely. Turning that hemlock tree into a home, all those creative ways he uses natural materials and how he trains. Mm -hmm. Frightful. It just sparks your own imagination. It makes you think outside the box. Totally. It's like the book is giving you permission to be creative and resourceful, to see the possibilities all around you. And in a world where everything feels so structured and tech-driven, that message is super important. So important. It's like a call to reconnect with that creative spark. We all have to see potential in simple things and to realize that sometimes the best solutions are the ones you wouldn't expect. When you think about it, My Side of the Mountain, it's not just an adventure story. It's a celebration of self-reliance, a testament to what humans can overcome, and a deep exploration of our connection to nature. It reminds you that we're part of something bigger than ourselves and that we can adapt and find fulfillment in unexpected places. Totally. Right? Like, even with all the chaos and craziness of modern life, the book reminds you that you have the power to connect with nature, to rely on your own ingenuity, and find peace. And I think that message really resonates with young people, especially as they're trying to figure out where they fit in. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So thinking about your students now that they've finished the book, what takeaways do you think are most important for them? Well, I think there are a few. First, it encourages them to appreciate and respect the natural world, to look closely at their surroundings, observe those little details, and think about how everything is connected. To step away from the screens, put down their phones, and really experience the world with all their senses. Exactly. And second, the book celebrates problem solving and resourcefulness, like how Sam creates his home, finds food, and tackles all those wilderness challenges. It shows that with determination and creativity, you can overcome almost anything. It's like a masterclass in hands-on learning and critical thinking, showing that the best solutions often come from looking beyond the obvious and using what's already there. And while the book definitely celebrates the value of being alone and discovering yourself, it also reminds us that we need each other. Like with Sam's relationships with his family, Miss Turner Bill and Bando, yeah. it shows that we need support and encouragement to feel like we belong. It's all about finding that balance between being independent and being connected, recognizing that true strength comes from both. Such a powerful message for young people and for all of us. It encourages them to be themselves, but also to reach out and connect with others, to find their own path knowing they don't have to walk it alone. That's a great takeaway. As we wrap up this part of our deep dives, we've explored some of the deeper themes in my side of the mountain, the celebration of self-reliance, the call to connect with nature, and that insightful look at what it means to grow up and find your place in the world. You know, it's pretty amazing how my side of the mountain, it still connects with people after all these years. Right. It came out so long ago. I know. <laughs>
there's something about it that feels timeless. You know what I mean? Like the themes, the experiences it talks about, it's like it tapped into this universal desire to connect with nature and live a simpler life. It's like the power of a good story, Sean George. He really takes you there with his descriptions. He really does. You feel like you're right there with Sam, feeling that crisp mountain air, hearing the leaves crunching beneath his feet. And in a world that's so full of technology and information overload, this book offers something different. It's true. It's like a reminder to slow down, to appreciate the simple things, to escape all the noise for a little while. It's like an antidote to all that chaos and disconnection we feel sometimes. Totally. My side of the mountain. It grounds you, gives you perspective. It reminds you that there's still beauty and wonder out there and that we're capable of so much more than we think. And that resilience, the adaptability, it's inspiring. It's like the book is saying, hey, even with all the craziness of modern life, mm. you can still connect with nature. You can rely on yourself and you can find peace. Such a powerful message, especially for young people who are still figuring things out. So as we wrap up our deep dive into My Side of the Mountain, we've covered a lot. Mm -hmm. The story, the characters, the themes, its impact. Mm -hmm. But before we go, we want to leave you with something to think about. Something to spark some more exploration and discussion with your students. That's a great idea. It's important to go beyond just reading the story. Exactly. To really dig into those deeper meanings. What does my side of the mountain say about self-reliance, about our relationship with nature, about growing up? So many questions to consider. Here's one for you. Would you be able to survive in the wilderness like Sam? What skills would you need? What challenges would you face? And what would you gain from the experience? Putting yourself in Sam's shoes like that, I bet it would lead to some amazing insights. It makes you think about your own resourcefulness, your connection to nature, and what it really means to be self-reliant. It's an incredible story. My side of the mountain. It's a gift. It sparks your imagination, makes you think critically, and inspires you to appreciate the natural world. And you know what? It stays with you. It makes you see the world differently with a sense of wonder. Definitely a book worth revisiting again and again. Absolutely. And that wraps up our deep dive. We hope you enjoyed exploring my side of the mountain with us. 